So last time we discussed about how we may use uh, repetitions in Python and especially we focus on while loops and we look at how we may print, you know, a set of numbers or number patterns. And especially when you have printing some numbers like this, we could think of using just print statement. Of course you can use it, but then again, since you have a pattern, you don't have to repeat the same operation, which means print. So we will use print number as a variable and we initialize a variable value. In this particular case, we initialize as one. And then within the loop, we print the number and we increase the number by one. And then we have a condition here, which we declare we are to stop. In our case, we need to stop uh, after printing number 10. So this will print numbers from one to 10. So when you're writing a while loop, another thing that you need to remember, there are three important places which you need to focus on, especially the, the starting point. This is one of the things that you have to focus on. Second one, whether you are going to increase or decrease depending on your requirement. And finally, uh, the condition. This is where, this is how you could control any uh, while loop. Right, again, uh, let's uh, move on to the next one. So what if, if you are going to work on uh, calculations, like you want to summing up, all the numbers within, let's say, 1 to 10. So how are we going to do that, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to discuss next. So let's assume that we are asked to, uh, you know, find printing or calculating numbers from 1 to 10. So in this particular case, uh, we can think of printing numbers first. So let's start uh, my Python. Okay, let me share with you. Okay, so this is my Python interpreter. And then uh, let me open up a new file. Right, we'll put it in the other side. So we have the two windows now. Uh, let me start from the beginning. We said number equals one. And then while number is less than or equal to 10, we said print number, and then we increase the number by one. Right, so let me save this. Um, when it comes to save, uh, I think we had to go inside right uh, we have completed seven programs according to my case let me make it program number nine okay <clears throat> So this will, if you run it, will uh, just repeat numbers from one to 10. A small question, so let's say I want to just add numbers from one to 10. How can I, uh, we modify the same code, but just to, uh, you know, find the sum of numbers from one to 10? So the right now our code will print numbers from one to 10. Okay, if I want to modify this code, my requirement is instead of uh, just printing, I want to just add all the numbers together. Of course, you already know that if you want to add numbers together, we don't have to print number, right? So that's not what we need, but we want to add numbers. So instead of this, what I want is adding numbers 
one at a time. So the idea is we can say, uh, I can take a new variable, let's say total, and we would say something like uh, total equals total plus number. So the meaning of this particular statement is, okay, you get the uh, previous total and just add the number. So initially it will add one, then two, then three and so on. And finally it will add 10. But we know that uh, another thing that we have to focus on is we have to set this initial value. So you can notice that while doing this, so I actually change the program from printing numbers from one to 10 to add numbers from one to 10. And you can notice that I did it iteratively, right? So within the loop, I take one particular number at a time. And finally, okay, you have to go out of this while because I told you indentation will give you a block of code, which I want to come outside. And then I would say print, okay, let me use uh, F strings. The total is, I can say total, right? So let me run this, run, run module. And you can notice that uh, the total of numbers from um, 1 to 10 is 55. Right. Okay. A small question again. Right. What if if I want to uh, get, right, um, marks from the user? And just I want to add it. So what should be the way and how should I do that? A any ideas? So let's uh, forget about the total and then let's put it this four and see what happens. Let me run this. And if I run this, this will request marks. So I can put, let's say 45, 89, 37, uh, 13, 79, 53, 69, um, 96, 49, 39. You see, it repeated 10 times. What this means is, although we used uh, this same code, you will notice that this particular case, uh, this piece of code will um, run exactly 10 times, you will get marks. Right. So therefore, actually, what you could do is, although we have a number here, you can say count because it's count how many times something repeat. I can say count instead of number. I will say the proper word for this is this particular variable we use in to just to count how many times the low repeat. So whatever we put it here will repeat 10 times. And to get the total, now I need your help. So total will be initial zero. So what should be the line I should put it here to get the total?
Yes. Exactly. Um, so we need to, Parakrama already given me the answer. So it should be that you say total equal total plus marks. Right? So this is what exactly happens. And if you run this, let me run. What happens? We'll repeat the same thing. Uh, we'll see what happens. Right? So I will put the same numbers, 45, 89, 37, 13, 79, 53, 69, 96, then 49, 39. It's a totally is. 469. So, of course, if you want to find the average marks, then ideally what we need is we can divide this by 10 and then we can print average. So, let's say uh, we want the average marks. So what we can do is we can have another variable. Let me see average equals total divided by 10. And of course, we can see average. So here is a complete run of the problem. So we can get marks, right? We'll see 45. So it says uh, 56.9, which is what we need. Right. And, and if I go back to my note, you will see the same uh, similar answer where we have uh, getting average marks for 10 students, where we get, uh, you know, uh, total average and count. Uh, the the three variables to handle this problem and we are getting uh, you know marks and then uh, we uh, calculate the total and then uh, finally we divide the total by 10 to get the average marks okay so i think um, we are very clear about um, what we need to do uh, when you have a situation like this Right, when you want to repeat something, we can use uh, so far we discussed while loop. Right. So that's about the while loop. And, and the beauty of the while loop is it conditionally controlled, which means based on the condition. So you don't necessarily uh, repeat fixed number of iteration. So it checks particular condition uh, until the condition become false, you can repeat. Right, so let's move to the next part. Right, so with that said, uh, we are going to switch it to uh, in uh, today's session. In, in, in today's session, the first thing that we are going to discuss is uh, we'll start with looking at another type of uh, repetitive statements, which we call for loops. So usually uh, we use for loop uh, 
uh, to iterate over we call sequence of object what we what we said like sequence um uh, basically you can use in multiple different situations which i will discuss how we can use this iteration for example we can iterate through a list of numbers we can iterate through um, a sequence of characters and so on so uh, this is very useful later on if you have a sequence of objects in uh, in a way that uh, we put it so that we can re repeat one at a time right so let's look at an example where how we could use um, for loop now as i told you earlier we talk about um, sequence of objects so the first thing we are going to look at how we can get a range of numbers right uh, this is useful uh, because if you want to repeat a for loop for a fixed iteration, so this is the easiest way you do. Uh, so, but you need to understand first the range function, which will generate the sequence of numbers. Now, when you look at range function, uh, range has three values usually. You can have go up to three. arguments so for example if you it's like this we can have range and you can have up to three values start stop and step uh, but depend on what we need to do this might take one value two value or all the three values right so for example if you have two values in the first example, we have two values. Actually, it's specify start value and stop value. Start value. Right, so what it means, so here is one, specify the start value, five is the stop value. So when I say range one comma five, it start with one, and the default step will be, default step will be one. Because we didn't specify step here, right? Um, so in other words, we can say step is one, right? Uh, so in this particular case, what happens, you will uh, have a set of numbers. If you say 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, 5 is not included. We can say it goes up to the second number, but it's not included. So therefore, if you specify range 1, 5, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? These are the range of numbers. So let me explain the second one now. So in the second one, we have just one value. So if you have just value, one value, it specify the uh, stop, right? Which means, which means start is zero. So start is zero and step is one, right? So therefore you will notice now, if you say range five, I, we know it starts with zero. It goes on zero, one, two, three, and four. Goes up to five, right? Not including five. And when we have three values, you know what it means. Start, stop, and step. So you have one. Step is two, right? So that means you have one plus two. Then you have three. You cannot have five because it should not include five. There are four. Outcome would be one comma three.
So let me explain. Right now, given that we have this, what do you mean by given that? Um, given that that we want to, uh, you know, printing numbers, right? We can use like this. So let me use only this one. Actually, we can use this. Right now, for example, it's like this. For loop works like this. For example, if you want to print numbers from 1 to 10, you start with 1, then 2, 3, then stop value should be 11, right? You understand this. So both Hemal and Paratma were correct on this. So what I can do is I can simply write for number that is a variable in range 1, 11. So when I say 1, 11, the first value is 1, the second value is 2, third value is 3. So number get one item at a time from this list of numbers. And simply what we want to do is print that. So we get one at a time from this range of values and it goes from one to 10, simple as that. Okay, good. So I think you got the point. So what I've asked you to do is um, to try out this as uh, using four loops. Right. We discuss how to uh, print numbers from one to 10. And then if you want to change this to 100, uh, what we need to do is um, instead of 1100, uh, if you want to print 1 to 100, then we have to specify the stop value as 101. So I hope that was clear to you. So starting from 1 to 100. Then again, if you need odd numbers, we know what you mean by odd is the default step, we have to set it to two. So then when you set this to two, this will print odd numbers from one to 100, starting from one, three, five, nine, it goes up to uh, 99. Then the next one is if you want to print even numbers, we know we have to start with two. Again, we can specify stop value base 101 and step base two. So we know that uh, it will print, uh, you know, even numbers. Last one is very tricky one, because if you take uh, <coughs> printing numbers, so we have to write from the beginning. So let me say, I will say four, uh, let's say number in range. Okay, start value. Uh, we know that we have to start from one. Uh, you have to print one as well. So then it should be zero, the stop value. Then minus one as the step, right? And if you do this way, you should notice that we can print in backwards, printing numbers from 10 to one. Okay. Um, so I hope it's very clear now how you may use, uh, you know, for loop, right? And I hope you are now comfortable with range function. Right, so let's move on. Um, so let's get back to our previous code, right? A small exercise for you, uh, this one. Uh, what we did here is we got marks for 10 students and then uh, we print the average marks. Okay, so I want you to do the same using a for loop. Right, 
one of the things that we need to understand is for while loop there are three parts we have starting value increment and then the condition so let me just remove these places because in for loop you don't need this but let me change here so we know that for the for loop for in my case i said this count um, and then let's say in range and let's say one comma 10 oh sorry one comma 11 right this will repeat 10 times right yes one to 10 so if i repeat the same thing no issue i can work it on it let me but save this as a different file name uh, this is program number nine right so if i repeat the the same thing with the for loop right if i repeat the same thing with the for loop And you will notice that there's no difference with the while and for, right? So, for example, let me run this. Let me run. Uh, I'm going to say run run module. Okay, I at last me to enter marks. Let me put forty five eighty nine. 37, 13, 79, 53, 69, 96, 49, and 39. And we get the same as so no difference with uh, four and one, but you need to understand. Right in a for loop, we are using a range function here to control over how many times. But if you focus on the compact representation, you can just say 10. Right? Let me explain for you. So, for example, let's say I have a something like 4i in range 1, comma 11. Right? And then let's say print i. Uh, so, print, let's say. Uh, E -E -I -S. So this will repeat 10 times, right? Yes. Can you count? 10 times. So the easiest or compact way to do this is just put in here and it repeat 10 times. Why? Because if you just put 10, what happened? It goes from 0 to 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. So this will repeat exactly 10 times. So what it means, if you want to repeat something five times, just put five. Sorry. Just put five. Right? So if you want to repeat something for a fixed number of iterations, if you don't have nothing to do with the, the value that it rate. So easiest ways you just use how many times you want to repeat. So in my code, if I want to have a compact representation, I just put 10 because I know that this will repeat 10 times. And what happens within the loop? You get the marks and marks will be added to the total. Right? So this is the compact representation for finding average marks of students using programs. So now we have seen uh, the use of uh, for and while loops. And if you ask me like when to use what, we need to understand uh, the two different uh, use cases for these two uh, repetitive statements. Now, for statement is better 
when you exactly know how many times you are repeating. And I told you like it's uh, iterate on the sequence. So therefore, most of the time for loops are used when we already know how many times you repeat. But if you don't know how many times you are repeat, which means if the number of iterations are known, then you should use while loop because it's conditionally controlled. So I hope uh, we are clear about the, the two different user cases of uh, while and for loops. Let me move on to the next part. So we are going to discuss about the jump statements. Um, now, so far, all these repetitive and uh, selection statements actually going from one place to an, another place, right? So jump is do the same. Uh, if you want to go from one place to another place, um, we will use jump statement. And in Python, we are going to talk about three jump statements, but in this particular session, I'm going to focus only on two, break and continue. Return, we will discuss with functions, right? So there are two jump statements which we are going to discuss. Let me explain first the break statement, right? So in simple terms, what break does, it'll break the loop. Usually, break will come out from the loop, right? So, for example, if you have a loop and then if you have a break statement, it will break the loop. It will come out from the loop. So, let me explain why we need break, right? So, let me take with the example. So, I'm going to use... Um, Yes. Right. Um, first of all, uh, let me start with the new file. Right. So the code that I will explain one at a time to understand how this works. So uh, we discussed from our previous point that if you say for i in range, and if you say just 10, and let's say we are going to print uh, uh, in, So it should be, basically, we are trying to print the numbers. Let me put I here. Let me say file save. So I'm going to say that this is program number 10, right? So if I run this, run, run module, and you will notice that this will print a range of numbers from zero to nine, and it will repeat exactly 10 times, right? Okay, the next one, what I'm going to do, there's a small mistake here. It should be I, uh, I'm, print, I'm trying to print the numbers. So now I'm going to use to get a number from the user. So let me say n equals int input, let's say input a number. So if I put that, and if I put in here, can you guess what will be the outcome? Hmm. 
Yes. So n could be any number. And the for loop will repeat depending on the user's input. For example, let me run this. If the user input 5, it will go from 0 to 4, right? Let me run again. If you put 25, yes, it will go from 0 to 24 because now the how many times the loop repeats depend on the user's input. Now let me put a break here. Yeah. And I told you what break does. It will break the loop. As soon as Python sees break statement, it will break the loop. Now, can you tell me what is the output of this program? Let's assume that I put 10 as the input value. Can you give me the answer? I will repeat. Right? Given this piece of code, right? Tell me what is the output of this program. So, given this problem, and if you ask, if you put a break statement like this, what happens? Irrespective of what user input, it will run once and stop. Let me run one more time. Run. Let me put five. It, I put five, but it just prints zero because First, I start with zero, print i, it will print zero, then break. That's all. Irrespective of what user enters, it breaks, right? After first iteration. Okay, now you got my point. So what if, if I put, if i greater than nine, and this is the code I have given to you. Now tell me, what is the output of this program? So if I run this code and if I put five, the value of five goes from zero to four and it is not comes into this range because this will not be executed. But I have a second question. If I put 25, what will happen? Now see, so when I put 25, it's supposed to go from 0 to 24, right? 0 to 24. Because that's the range of values if you got range 25. But you see, after printing number, when i is greater than 9, for example, we check 9, is it greater than 9? No. 10, is it greater than 10? Yes, that means... After it will print 10, there's a problem, right? Not problem. You meet the break. So what happens? If we 25, it will print numbers from 0 to 10. Because it will print 10. Right? And then 10 is greater than 9, then it will break. Right? So if you put more than 11 for n, it will stop printing numbers from 0 to 10, right? Just check this. So that's the break statement. So ideally, this break statement are used whenever you want to come out from a loop. Like if you want to develop a simple menu and depending on a user's request, if you want to come out from this, then you can use the break statement. Right, so that's about the break statement. So 
let's uh, again summarize what we have discussed. There are two jump statements. Break and continue. We discussed break. And what break does, whenever Python interpreter sees break, it will come out from the loop, right? That's what you need to remember. Let's move to the next one, our last uh, topic today, right? Continue state. Break and continue state. So what continue does, continue, you are in a loop. And when you see, when Python sees the continue statement, it will go to the next iteration without continuing the remaining. Right? So when you say continue, right, it won't execute whatever whatever comes after continue. You get my point? Okay, let me explain you. So let's uh, take another new document. So I'm going to get new file, right? And then, okay, I want you to give me the answer for this. So if I say O I in range one comma eleven, and if I say print I, right? Let me save this. So this is program number level, right? So if I run this, can you give me what is the outcome of this program? I goes from one, then two, three, and the final value will be 10. So if I run this, we know that it will print numbers from one to 10. Agree? So what about this? Can you guess what is the outcome? Oh, let me put it like this. Let me say done. Okay, can you guess what is the outcome? You have two print statement, right? Two print statements. It will print I. Then it print done, right? Like this. Okay, what I want to explain is a continue statement. If you see continue like this, now what happens? Yes. Now tell me what happens here if I run this. As I told you earlier,
Right. So when I run this, observe that this will not be executed because it's after continue. Right? It's after continue. So what you need to remember now is how continue statement works. Whatever comes after continue will not be executed. It will go to the next iteration. So whenever Python interpreter meets continue, it goes to the next iteration. If in one, then it goes to two, right? It's like that. Now let me explain what we have here, right? So in this one, we are simply printing the total marks from one to 10. So we have total, total is zero, right? And then print y, I will for the time being remove continue statement. We have total equals total plus i. And we can print total. So if I do this, if I run run module, see what happens. It'll print. I forgot to put F here. That is F strings. So we'll get 55 as the answer. Now, what if, if I put this statement? Let me explain now. So we get I. What is this operator, mod operator? You divide by two and check the remainder. So what do you mean by divide by two and remainder zero? Yes. So what happens in this statement is, you get I divide by two, the remainder. So if the remain is zero, we say continue. So now what happens? Yes, anyone? Yes, Parakrama, what do you think? If I put this statement, what happens here? You divide the number by two, the remainder. We are checking whether the remainder is zero. Simply, we check whether the number is divisible by two. If the number is divisible by two means it's, we are checking whether the number is an even number. If it is an even number, we say continue. So what happens? Then, only odd numbers will be added to the total. Only odd numbers. So let me run. So if I say run, run module. So this time it will be 25. Why it is 25? If you check carefully what happens with 10 numbers. So nothing wrong with 1. So 1 will be added then three, then five, then seven, then nine. So one plus three is four, nine, 16, and nine, 25, right? So let's say you have difficulty in understanding. 
So you can tabulate, we normally call trace table. So you can put up a table like this. We have I, right? We have variable total. And then I can also put uh, how many times the loop repeats, I will say T, right? So initially, we know the total is zero. Yes, initially, we know total is zero. We have a loop here. So when the loop start, that for the first time, I will be one, right? So now you get I, you divide by two, is it zero? It's not zero, so therefore it will come here. That one is added to the total, so you will get one. Because total earlier is zero plus one, it's one, then you go to the next iteration. Then next iteration, I is two. Two divided by two, is it zero? Yes, then you say continue, it will go up. It won't change any total. So the total is still one. Then third iteration, I is three. So it will not meet continue. It will add up to the total. Total becomes four. Fourth iteration, I is four. It will divide by two. So total will not be changed. Then five. Right? So five we added to the four, that will be nine. But six is divisible, nothing will change. Right? Then seven, seven will be added. Then this becomes 16, but eight is divisible. So therefore, total will not be updated. Then the remaining parts I will write here. Nine iteration, I is nine, right? Total will be added, that is 25. Then 10th iteration, 10 will be divided by two, no change. So as you can see, the final answer will be 25. Okay, so with that, uh, we will conclude.